You're saying your attempt to understand the fundamental operations of nature leads you to a set of equations that are indistinguishable from the equations that drive search engines and browsers on yeah, our computers. That is correct. Computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. So I was just going through solving equations and I was then driven to things that Max knows about, these things called error correcting codes. Error correcting codes are what make browsers work. So why were they in the equations that I was studying about quarks and leptons and supersymmetry? If you think about a computer, if we are a simulation, then we're like programs in a computer. As long as I have a computer that's not damaged, I can always rerun the program. Yello. If the soul existed, where would it be? Many have referred to the mind through metaphor as a computer, but let's now try a different perspective, a different narrative. As metaphor, what if we resided within a computer? Now, a computer programmed with artificial intelligence would have no conception of what its exterior looked like unless something from the outside world gave it an image or something along those lines. Otherwise, it would go along its entire lifespan relatively, if not completely, oblivious. Even then, if it were to be given an explanation, its perception of that explanation would likely not be congruent with the perception of what gave it that explanation. Okay, so if an artificially intelligent computer were to be given no outside perspective of its own existence, how would it go along figuring itself out? One way could be through running simulations. So now, imagine this, a game, perhaps like World of Warcraft or any other game. What comes before that game is a firmament of interpreters. Strung within a firmament of interpreters, they have their own code, and that code loads the operating system, which then loads the game. Now, within that game, you have characters with their own individual code. Now, imagine those characters have artificial intelligence that lets them perceive each other. Imagine them being able to look inside each other like a doctor or surgeon would a patient Looking inside and manipulating the variables to some degree, they would assume that all they are is what is inside. Further reinforcing this, they get so proficient at understanding the variables inside that they can leverage it to their advantage, say like growing an actual kidney in a lab. But is that true? Is that game character what they see inside, their biology, or is that character a byproduct of the same interpreters which loaded the operating system. That is just it. The code within the game and the code within the character allow it to exist as an individual in relation to its environment, but the outside force, the interpreters of the computer are what bring the character to life, bring its individual being into fruition in the first place. In that sense, the soul or driving force within the game character is outside itself. And if this is true, maybe physicist James Gates is pointing towards something as well. A computer built leveraging this reality might be a reflection of it. And if that is the case, in metaphor, our reality is a simulation, a game code. And we, as our physical vessels, the same. If the metaphor is true, this means our driving life force, or soul, counterintuitively, exists outside of us. We live inside our soul.
Yo, know, maybe in some sense, the monks were right. Maybe we truly are all connected, all one. Perhaps there is more truth to that than we can even realize, even perceive. It makes you think. What are your thoughts on the matter? They are always appreciated. Thank you. And until next time, peace.